For realism, we're going to make our roast beef rare. I'll demonstrate this by gradually building up layers of slightly different colours to produce a bl blending effect. We'll be using this idea again in the next section, so it's worth doing this one first. We'll be going from red to brown. In this case, we're going to use five different grades of colour, which should be enough for two colours that are so similar. This red and brown are really quite closely related colours. Just dividing this up so we can mix the colours side by side. Rolling and pressing softens the colours and helps it to mix very easily. As you can see, there's already a slight change in the colours. Here's the middle one that I've already prepared using 50-50 of each colour and here we're getting almost to brown. This method of rolling and folding is really quite quick as long as your Fimo is soft enough. I find it softens well in summer but my cold hands need warming up in winter. You could use a hot water bottle and leave your modelling material on the hot water bottle to keep warm or sitting in front of the television it's quite nice just to mix your colours and there's the last one I'll just soften it up I'm going to make this pink into a cylinder, which will be the centre, the rare centre of our roll of beef. I'm using fairly large quantities to demonstrate, but you could use less. There's my cylinder. I need to wrap that one round it. I'll just use my fingers for this because it's quite soft. It's a little like the stacking we did earlier but this time we're using gradual colour changes instead of two dramatic ones and I'm working with a cylinder instead of on the flat. I'm folding the colours round the outside not as precisely as I would have done if the colours were very different. With this gradual change though the seams won't show. As you can see we're building up layers of colour. Joining it together. And this is the last one. I think I've made a little too much here, so I'll just cut some off. If you look carefully, you can see the centre really is quite pink.
the cooked part of the meat. Yes, I've made too much here, so I'm going to cut some off. Now I'm, sh I'm going to shorten this cylinder because what I want to do is cut through it to put a line of fat in. I'm just going to start by tearing it. We don't want a regular cut. We don't want it too perfect. And I'm putting a very light, almost translucent, with just a little champagne colour in. I'm going to roll it quite thin. I'll add those back together because what we want to end up with is a streak of fat running through the centre of the beef joint. I'll just trim this off. I think you can start to see that this can roll out to be a long strip with many potential joints of beef. Of course you can make a smaller amount. I'm using this fat to go right round the beef. Now I'm adding a skin layer, which we'll paint later to look cooked. This is translucent with a little ochre added. Same colour as we used for the bacon. And you can paint it with the same humbrol colour. I'm putting this about two thirds of the way round, because often the skin wouldn't go all the way round the meat. And in fact the fat layer often doesn't. But in this case, I've put it right round. Now I'm lengthening the cylinder, as we did with the bacon, making the joint longer and reducing its width. I'm pressing it quite firmly in the middle, to make sure that it all joins together and sticks. This is an excellent technique for reducing scale, as I've said before, and you'll see at the end of this video just what lengths, excuse the pun, you can take this to. I'm being quite firm with this squeezing together to make sure all the elements combine properly and that they don't flake away from each other and crack. When I'm happy about this, I can roll it to lengthen it even further until it gets to be about a centimetre and a half or a little over half an inch in diameter and then we can cut through the middle to show the effect I'm adding marks from a piece of string to leave the texture where the string might have been. 
in olden days beef was always tied up or strung up to hold it together. If you were making raw beef you could use exactly the same methods but you wouldn't need the change of colour that we've made here and you could actually tie the string on before cooking. I'm gently softening the edges of what will be the roasted end of the beef. And we'll make the joint. And we can start to carve the beef. You can make the slices just as thick as you would like them if they were real. If you're vegetarian, perhaps the fruit and vegetables video might be more appealing. Here's another method of putting the string marks on, just pressing it down over the joint. Of course you can use the sliced beef on plates with perhaps carrots and mash on a serving dish. I show you how to make Fimo plates and serving dishes on my Very Easy Fimo video.